Hey everybody, Josh Allen, a.k.a. Lore, joined by Mike B, a.k.a. Phony. How's it going, buddy? <sighs> Hi, how you doing? I'm doing good. How you doing? <laughs> Are we going to get sexy in here? What's going on? Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Welcome to the uh, Don't Get Your Hopes Up Poetry oh, Corner. Yeah. <laughs> 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 this oh, is dumb. Creepy, creepy I'm bored of this. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is our podcast. Yes, it is. Um, again, actually. again, yes, yeah, again. It, it, it still is. This is a good thing so far. <laughs> yeah. Thus far, we've not lost it mm-hmm. or misplaced it or had it stolen. We've been consistent in the things. fact that it's been ours every week. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we're very good at that. It's very important. So, um, big news this week, uh, Blizzard announced that, uh, Titan has been canceled. What? 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 Now, I have to immediately say before we really even say anything that there isn't really much of anything that I can say on the topic. It's something that's on the list because it's the sort of thing that we have to talk about because it's a big deal, but... Like, I've had people asking me all sorts of places, like, oh, now the Titan's been canceled, can you talk about it? No. No. No, I can still not tell you what Titan was. <laughs> These are still not things that I can talk about. Uh, so the actual game itself, that topic is, that is, that is no-go. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the fact that it has been canceled, uh, that is something that I can talk about, because it's it's a pretty big deal. Like, when a company is willing to step back and say... Well, you know this game we've been working on for ages and people have known about for ages, even though it's never actually been announced, like all this game we've been working on for forever. And we're just going to not do that. We're just going to not. Like, I don't know, that's a pretty big deal. Like, walking away from all that. A lot of, I think a lot of game developers in that position would turn around and say, well, it's too late. Like, we've worked on this for too long. We've put too much into this. We have to launch it. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, and Blizzard has decided to not. So that's actually kind of cool to me. It's, I mean, it's, it's, it's cool of them to be in a position to be able to make that, that call. Yeah, for sure. It's like, if, if anything, you should tell you that Blizzard is not hurting. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're not hurting for money. <laughs> yeah. If they're not going to like just shovel out some bullshit for everyone to just buy up because it's an ex-Blizzard thing. Like they, they still have value in the brand overall. Uh, yeah, and honestly, right now, like uh, you know, from from you know, non Blizzard uh, employee perspective, like you guys have <laughs> so much shit you're juggling at the moment. Um, yeah, seriously, I'm not I'm not surprised that that this happened. Nobody's surprised that it, that it happened. It was just like, oh, they actually announced that it happened. Like they didn't just keep the hype going forever that this game was gonna come out, eventually <laughs> turning it into Half Life Three. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think it's a good thing, especially like with BlizzCon in a couple of months. Like, you wouldn't want people showing up at BlizzCon again and saying, "God damn it, Blizzard! You didn't announce Titan this time." I like, know. that would suck to have your entire BlizzCon be waiting for that announcement and it doesn't doesn't ever come. So then you're like, regardless of anything else that happens at BlizzCon, you're gonna be upset because there wasn't a Titan announcement. Yeah. So and. Uh, yeah. Here's the thing, though. Here's the thing that I've heard, and I, I'm, I, I'm trying really hard not to subscribe to this mindset, but it's very, very difficult. Mm. <laughs> People are like, oh, well, now that now that Titan has finally been announced that they're not working on it, this leaves room for them to announce something else at BlizzCon. <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> wait. it's like, you know, I, I think that's totally doable. I think that's possible, but that logic does not make sense at all. <laughs> <laughs> So they've had this development team working on this other thing for ages, and clearly that other thing now is not happening. It's like two months to BlizzCon. We just uh, whip something up out of nowhere. Something up. Hey man, I don't know. I don't know. But I mean, it would be it would, if, if BlizzCon came around and uh, they did manage to announce something else. Uh, there's 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 something something that I've heard in the in the rumor mill. Well, actually, I just I followed a trademark thing. That's pretty much it. Um, and that was like the end of it. Uh, other than that, like. I think it's it would be a treat to get something on top of everything else. It would be like, mm. oh my god, I just uh, and I'd pass out or something like that because yeah, I don't know, boner or something. But uh, it would with everything else that is going on at BlizzCon with like the fifteen other games that Blizzard has now versus what they yeah. had in two thousand eleven. Um, yeah, like uh, 
like just looking at all the franchises, not not necessarily all of them particularly making an announcement, but like every franchise will be supported at BlizzCon in some yep. capacity. That's uh five different franchises now. Mm-hmm. Uh Warcraft or World of Warcraft, StarCraft, uh Heroes, Hearthstone, and Diablo. Like <laughs> it seems like only a year ago. And it almost was like, I guess actually, uh, there was Hearthstone last year, but it wasn't that long ago that you, there were like three franchises for Blizzard. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like in 2011, uh, cause yeah. it, in 2012, they didn't even have one. Yeah, exactly. So in 2011, BlizzCon was basically all about World of Warcraft and there was some Starcraft and Diablo stuff that was going along with that. Cause I don't think that the, uh, Diablo expansion had even been, been announced yet at that point. Uh, I think um, we, I think we, I, oh man, was it 2010, 2011? Like when oh, they no, showed, yeah, I they think showed it was the trailer, there. they showed a trailer, but it yeah. wasn't really a trailer so much as it was like three claws going through a, uh, the word yeah. Diablo or something. I can't remember yeah. what it was. Yeah. So yeah, there, it, it's just a lot to suddenly have to support. And like, so we, basically what I'm saying is that there is no longer a way to really realistically say this is the big thing at blizzcon and then the other franchises are probably going to talk about some stuff there's just too much going on Mm -hmm. like heroes is obviously going to want to be a a major focus of discussion they just uh, moved over to production servers with their their account wipe recently yeah so um i I think it's say i I don't actually know what that team is up to particularly i stay pretty much in my own little wow bubble uh (laughs) but like I would assume that there's some stuff going on at BlizzCon with that. Um, if nothing else, it's going to be on the floor and playable, and that'll be cool. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and actually, yeah. it's it's been at almost every convention and playable. <laughs> like I've been <laughs> at almost every convention uh, in some min- capacity. Yeah, yeah minus uh, NY NY and SDCC. Um, mm. And Blizzard has pretty much been there almost every time. Yeah. And they have that little that like four horsemen setup. <laughs> mm. <laughs> like their 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 uh their actual uh setup has like each game ha- kind of has its own like corner in a sense right yeah uh which is really neat and uh but yeah it, it's if you've gone to any convention in the past year you've probably played the game uh if you're not yeah. already in the technical alpha which not a lot of people are actually in the technical alpha like tens yeah. of thousands not so much hundreds of thousands I don't think. yeah i'm i'm really hoping and again i don't actually know anything about what yeah, yeah, heroes yeah, yeah, is yeah, doing yeah. so i don't I, I don't want people to think that I'm spilling information here or anything, but I'm really hoping for some sort of like beta announcement or something either at or immediately prior to BlizzCon, like sometime in the next couple of months, because I really like playing the game. I, there's just not a lot of people to play with. And the ones that are in there are the ones that are really into heroes. So I get completely dominated all the time because yeah, I just don't play it as much. Like talk smack to you all the time. Uh, not you really, know, no, I've actually... I've actually noticed so far, at least, fingers crossed, like, and this is probably just due to a small number of people actually playing it, but there has, hasn't been a ton of, like, really angry, like, rage in Heroes just yet, mm-hmm. um, which is cool. Yeah. But, yeah. I it'll wanna, happen. I I get mean, more... it, it'll happen. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> it, that, that sort of, like, team-based game where you can watch somebody else screw up is just sort of the game that breeds rage. Yeah. Like, not as much in Heroes where one guy in your team dying to their carry three times suddenly means that you're screwed uh just because of the way that the the team leveling works yeah um, Th- that actually fixes a lot of issues like it does it does fix a lot of issues but it still is the sort of game that i don't know if it's maybe just something that like that genre has been around and filled with rage so long that people just sort of like assume that rage is how to play the game now so uh, yeah, yeah, that's true. I remember like, when oh, I'm playing a MOBA. I should be yelling right now. <laughs> I remember when people were like, uh, "Oh man, that the Dota like the, like you know the original Dota Dota community is so toxic. I'm gonna play League." Mm, yeah. <laughs> that was actually a thing at some point, at one point in time a couple mm-hmm. years ago. I'm gonna play League because this game has been dumbed down for newbies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, man, I remember even even like playing Heroes of New Earth. And then going over to League and being like, wow, people here are so much nicer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? And, and all it is, is as a game, ga- as a game gains popularity, uh, you're obviously going to, going to, unfortunately, absorb all the trolls. Like, that's just, yeah. that is just, it just comes with the territory. The bigger you are, the more dickheads you're going to basically yeah. attract. Yeah, and as people figure out the game, like in, in 
in Dota or Han or League, uh, and eventually in Heroes, this will happen too. Like people will figure out what the the quote unquote best build is for certain characters, mm-hmm. and they'll be like, "Oh, you picked that ultimate. Uh, we're screwed. We lose. You didn't pick the good ultimate. You picked the bad one. So we're gonna lose now. Good job, Nova. So." <laughs> The this bad Nova ultimate. picks the wrong ultimate. Yeah, cause, I mean, yeah. there's two no, ultimates, and someone will yeah. decide, like, as Rainer in this case, you should always pick the the battleship and not the. I don't even know what his other ultimate is, uh, but you should always pick this ultimate on this map because it's good for reasons. Mm-hmm. And someone will pick the other one, and then tears. <sighs> yeah. But hey, maybe it'll at least be less of a. It'll be less rage uh, fest. It'll be less, or or maybe it'll just it'll just take it longer to ramp up. Yeah, that's what it'll do. Yeah. Uh, either way, it's, it'll be uh, it'll definitely be interesting, and I'm uh, I know that quite a few people that I work with play it nonstop right now in its current state, and I'm like, you guys are spoiling yourselves. You guys are gonna ruin your dinner. <laughs> yeah, like where I sit at work. Um, so because of like. Because of California labor laws, every, like, two hours that you work, you get a 15-minute break. And then, like, two hours, 15-minute break. Four hours, lunch. Another two hours, 15-minute break. Another two hours, leave. Um, <laughs> that's, how, that's how this is supposed to work. Uh, and the other people on the floor, there's a bunch of other people on the, the floor that I'm on who will play heroes on their 15-minute breaks. That, like clockwork. Mm-hmm. So every two hours, people just start shouting at each other all around me. And I'm like, yeah, I'm trying to edit video. <laughs> <This."> <laughs> ah. uh, so, yeah, yeah. but like we'll, they, we'll definitely see some stuff from them at, uh, at, at BlizzCon. For yeah, I would, sure. so. I would think so. Um, yeah, so, so, so before we move on from, from Titan, uh, hmm. I, I just want a little, little memory lane. You remember mm. when we first started talking about Titan? <laughs> when we thought it was a Halo MMO? We, we had damn good reason to, okay? Yeah. <laughs> we had so much reason to do that. Yeah. Well, and uh, now, like, we've been playing what is essentially the Halo MMO, <laughs> like, crazy lately. <laughs> and this comes at the same time as Titan being canceled. Dude, here's what's funny. Here's what's actually really funny. So, you remember the tinfoil hat doc, right? Yeah. So, I'm looking at it right now. And... <laughs> I'm scrolling down here, and I have conver- like I have a like a brief piece of conversation from us, right? And then I have a couple other things. And at the very bottom, there's an article, and the article is titled it's from Eurogamer, and it's from 2011 May, and it says new evidence for Bungie's Destiny MMO, and it's a trademark renewal with a logo, and it is like the logo, and it gets at this point. I see you're jumping to the document right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you see, yeah. At the very bottom, you can see it's like it, it is like the Destiny MMO. And I guess maybe at some point we thought that the new MMO was going to be uh, was actually going <laughs> to be uh, Destiny, which yeah. it it is. I mean, it's still kind of Activision, and, yeah, but it's Bungie. <laughs> well, like and like thinking back now, so much of our <laughs> so much of our tinfoil hat theories were. Bungie's working on Destiny and is part of Activision. Blizzard is part of Activision, so Blizzard is also working on this. <laughs> hey, hey, at the very top of the document, the first thing in there is a tweet that I found where he says, the first day at Blizzard and the car in front of me at the security gate has a, my other car is a Warthog plate. And yeah. to me, I took that as gospel. It was like, that means, that's a sign. That <laughs> means that this is a... Uh, but yeah, well, this is like this is look at the very top November 11th, November 1st, 2012. Like, yeah, like the the Titan timeline thing or whatever. The timeline this is like it had Titan on it or whatever that was leaked a long ass time ago. Oh my yeah. god, oh my god, so many hours wasted with so much, so much tinfoil <laughs> rolls on rolls. <laughs> I love the <laughs> I'm highlighting this bit in the doc because it's hilarious to me the amount of tinfoil. <laughs> <laughs> says I'm gonna read this off to people. It says Ghost Crawler, Ensemble Studios worked on the Age of Empires series. Now lead systems designer for WoW, named after a crab. And there's an arrow pointing to that, and in italics it says, "Is there a connection here?" <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what it means. Like, it's like, are we being facetious in this thing? Like, are we? Do we have jokes in this joke document that we're kind of taking seriously? <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh man yeah 
Jeff Kaplan, previous lead game designer for a while, left in 2009 to work on unannounced MMO. Mm. Uh, Ensemble Studios previously held rights to create Halo MMO, closed in 2009. It was just like, yeah, oh, I we, forgot that that forgot about that. Yeah, we were noting everything that we could find. We were just logging it. Every and just... little like coincidence we could even find. Yeah, <sighs> like this. This if this was a physical thing, it would be that. That psycho basement dweller built like a car a pin board where there's like string attaching all of these different things with news like newspaper clippings and all that <laughs> stuff like, with question marks on the fucking sticky notes like stuck to some of the things. Yeah, uh, yeah, dude. This is the sort of document that you find like buried in the back of a mass murderer's like <laughs> <laughs> in his in his chest of drawers somewhere. Oh. Yeah, so sadly, I think it's about time to retire the uh, Titan foil hats. That sucks. The tin foil hats. They must be. I would pour one out, but it would be on the carpet and make a mess, and I don't feel like cleaning it up. It's hard to get Titan foil out of the carpet. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but hey, we got Destiny, so that's good. It's good enough, yeah. And we are playing it just as much as we thought we would probably be playing. Yep. Uh, Titan, whatever Titan was, we thought it Titan was supposed to be. Yeah. Basically, we <laughs> thought Titan was going to be what Destiny is, so it worked out, I guess. It did, yeah! See, <laughs> we win! Yeah. <laughs> we canceled Titan. It's like, wait, you mean you guys didn't release it? That wasn't <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what the hell have I been playing for the past three I mean, weeks? I am, I am a Titan in the game, right? I mean, oh, come on. See? Yeah. Oh my gosh, at the bottom yeah. of this list. <laughs> Put it in the dock. Put it in the dock. Put it in the dock, man. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Uh, speaking of Destiny, mm -hmm. as this is a Destiny, Destiny podcast. podcast. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Destiny, get your hopes up. That's the one. Don't get your destiny. <laughs> Don't get your destiny. Up. Don't get your ghosts up. Oh. Oh. Oh man. Oh. <laughs> destiny ghosts. Oh, I just your I hopes just, up. Fist bump myself and did the explosion <laughs> thing. Like I did both the fist bump and the explosion thing. Oh, I was really proud of that. I think. <laughs> Don't get your ghosts up. Yeah. Oh, perfect. <laughs> so you're so uh, so you're playing this game too, huh? Yeah, I, I've I've been playing Destiny. I don't know if anyone was aware, uh, <laughs> but I've been playing Destiny. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm level twenty one in some bit now at this point. Not super high, but mm, right, yeah, yeah. Working not super on it. high, sure. Yeah, <laughs> not not that great. I I mostly just die all the time. In the, I'm 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 gonna have to eventually break down and get one of those stupid Cronus Max like mouse and keyboard things just yeah. to be able to play this game and not be mad at myself the entire time. I I I've been running the experience. I turned the the sensitivity all the way up on the controller, and I was like, no, no, I can learn to play this like the the guys that play this. I can do it. I can do it too. I'll learn. I'm gonna play like. And no, I just die all the time. Like, <laughs> I, uh, I'm not not good at this. Ah. Uh, I mean, I do I do okay sometimes. Mostly when I happen to stumble onto five people all in one point, and I can throw a Nova bomb at them. <laughs> but. <laughs> Or like Titan dunk on them. Yeah, you know, that's good. It works. I did um, recently make the switch from the Stranger's Rifle, which, um, if you haven't gotten to the point yet, uh, the internet. I know that you have, but the internet at large. Uh, it's a pulse rifle that, like, it says, I, when I got it, I was like, oh, man, this pulse rifle can be fired in full auto mode. But no. Oh, my like, God. It's the biggest lie joke. ever. Bungie does not know what full auto means when in relation to firearms. Here's, here, here, here's what the rifle sounds like. I mean, just just roughly uh, when fired, uh, and you're firing it by clicking, like every you know whatever as fast as you can. Yeah. Okay, you got it. Okay, now here's what it sounds like when fired in full auto mode. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. I mean, with more laser you, type sound. Can but you tell the difference? Because neither can anyone else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that was like, it's literally just. Oh, you don't have to. You don't have to pull the trigger again. But it's it's a burst fire thing. So if you're holding it, you're doing it so wrong. If you're just holding it down, like with burst fire like that. No, you you fire a burst. You line up and you fire another burst. You don't hold that down so you can be firing your bursts off and uh, full a full auto burst. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
Uh, so that's not what full auto means, Bungie, if you're listening. So you, you just got that then? Uh, I, I got that, like, last week sometime. Okay. Um, but, like, in terms of gameplay time, I just haven't had a ton of time to even be able to play it. So, sure, I just got it, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I did a bunch of matches in the Crucible, and then I went to the weaponsmith guy and bought an auto rifle. <laughs> because, holy crap, in PvP, auto rifles are so much better than anything else you can put in your primary weapon slot. Yeah, unless unless you're really good with hand cannons, like I know I, I've seen some yeah. people play with hand cannons who just like just wreck face. Mm. And uh, if you can reliably get a headshot with a hand cannon before the other guy can burst you down with his auto rifle, then you will win. Yeah, and that's the thing. And that's the thing. So I, I'm an auto rifle guy, right? Yeah. Uh, for me, it's auto rifle shoddy. Uh, mm. And as a Titan defender, it's like I'm okay with getting close to people. Yeah. Um, it, it's it's just auto rifle. Just I, I just I call it painting. You know, it's like. They control the brush, the stroke, as they move across the screen, and then they die, and then I go to the next one. And if yeah. this one's close to me, yeah, it's just it's just so so nice uh, and fluid. Uh, I don't know why everyone doesn't use one. <laughs> uh, well, but I mean, like the, because this, they haven't figured out that it's overpowered. <laughs> I know, I know, right? I'm waiting. I think actually, think in the recent patch, they mentioned there's going to be a uh, yeah. a range nerf to them. Yeah, which that I have to agree with that. Uh, yeah, that's yeah, like it. I was noticing with the the stranger's rifle, the pulse rifle that I have, mm-hmm. um, every once in a while, and on the maps that are kind of open, I can do really, really well with it because it's at just just enough of a range that the auto rifle sort of starts to fall off, or at least is hard enough to aim with that it sort of starts to fall off. And the stranger's rifle is just really good, mm-hmm. so I, I can I can do well with that on those. But those are the situations in which. I also would probably be using a sniper rifle because that's how far away it is at that point. And right. it would probably be better for me to use a sniper rifle because then I will kill them in one hit instead of five. <laughs> uh, and the auto rifle is just so good at such a long range. So I totally agree with the nerf to the yeah. auto rifle. Um, they're talking about like reworking how shotguns work or something, which I also yeah, kind like of reduce, agree with. Reduce range. Yeah. Uh, which yeah, sucks. Cause, like, Go ahead. Well, like, I think that the shotgun is fine in terms of if you're really close to somebody and you get hit with a shotgun, you're probably dead. Like, that that's seems way, that's like exactly what a shotgun should be. Yeah. yeah. The problem is that they seem to have too close of a spread at too far of a range for me currently. Mm-hmm. So, like, if someone lines up a shotgun on you from... Uh, like, 10 yards. Yeah. Like, you should take a ton of damage, but you shouldn't necessarily die. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Like, unless they hit you in the face with the full, like, it just seems like the, the, they're too accurate at that sort of, like, 10 to 15 yard range. Yeah. Um, there should be, like, a better fall off of damage. Like, mm-hmm. so I actually just got my first uh, exotic weapon. Mm. I have an exotic chest piece, uh, and now I have an exotic weapon. I'm level 25, um, and it's called Invective. Mm. Uh, it's, it's an auto shoddy. Oh so, God! Yeah, so I, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm I'm actually finally going through the PVE stuff because I need mats from Mars in order to like upgrade my like, yeah. exotic chess piece, and so I'm like, oh well, I've only completed the first quest on Venus. I guess I should probably do something here, and so I started yeah. actually going through all the stuff, all the stuff. Uh, I got this this shotgun, and I run to a group of just big ass dudes. Uh, some Vex, I guess they're called, and I just hold down the, I just hold it down, and it's just a blah 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 blah. Like I just, <laughs> I just, I mean, of course the kick is ridiculous. So you aim at the feet, and you end up, you know, at staring at the sky. But uh, you know, it's four shots, and they're very very fast in succession. And I'm just thinking, after I saw that they, they, they said they're going to nerf the range, I'm like, thank God, because like, that, <laughs> like to be able to like have two shots in like less than a sec, like less than a half a second, it's just boom boom, like, yeah. really quick. That's too much. One shot with my old shoddy would take care of just about anybody. Yeah. Two shots from a exotic shoddy? It's like, give me a break. Yeah, at that point, it does get into the range. Like, it, when you're talking about multiple shots in rapid succession, like, it gets to the point where maybe they're 20 yards away and you can still kill them because, mm-hmm. like, it doesn't matter how wide the spread is. They do so much damage. Exactly. Uh, at the moment, at least. So, yeah, I feel like that's a good... I, I like the that they're talking about buffing scout rifles because those just feel those like garbage to me right now. Oh, my God. Yeah. I didn't realize how bad they were until I got the stupid Queen's mission. It was all like, get 20, no, 200 headshots or something. I don't even know what yeah. it was. Get a lot of headshots with a scout rifle. And yeah. I went out there and I was like, I can't kill anybody with this thing. 200 <laughs> damage, 200 damage. Like, give me a break. 
I I used a scout rifle from like level eight until I hit level twenty. And I was using it for all of my missions and everything. And the whole time I was like, man, I really hope I get an auto rifle soon. <laughs> and I just kept getting better scout rifles and nothing else. Oh, so I was like, ah, crap. I guess I'm stuck with this scout rifle for ages. Yeah. And then finally I got the stranger's rifle and I was like, oh my god. <laughs> like, <laughs> wow. This is so much better. And even pulse rifles. I think they said something about how pulse rifles they were looking at. Um, it, that may just be in relation to auto rifles, though, at the moment. Um, but yeah, like those sorts of balance changes, I think are really, really good. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's actually really cool to me that they're this like aggressive with getting these changes out, like especially the loot cave nerf, like that came <laughs> fast for a console title. Yeah, like, that did come fast. That was like less than a week ago. I mean, yeah. like obviously more than a week ago people were doing it, but honestly, like people, it didn't really hit mainstream until mm -hmm. probably Monday or so. Or, yeah. Like, yeah. Polygon posted or that, or something. I can't remember. that yeah. video that um, Force made, and it just sort of exploded from there, and that was four days ago that, mm -hmm. that that video was posted. So, yeah. It just takes the right people to, uh, <laughs> to yeah. say something about it, and it blows up. Well, yeah. yeah, and, like, the fact that they can, like, uh, obviously, like, consoles have basically been PCs in their internal workings for a couple mm -hmm. generations now, mm -hmm. but the fact that with the, the just the way that consoles work, the way PSN and Xbox Live and all of that work, the fact that they're able to roll out a patch this quickly to fix something like that is really, really promising for like the long term life of the game because this is not gonna be the only like I'm making air quotes exploit that <laughs> people find in uh -huh. an MMO. That's just the nature of MMOs is there's always going to be something like, in any game larger than like one small fraction of this is the only way you can play it. There's going to be stuff that people find that isn't what the original intention was. Yeah. It's just how MMOs work. Uh, and that's, it's, it's going to happen again. And if they're able to roll out fixes, this like, what if somebody found, uh, a way to glitch out a boss in the vault of glass or something that made it so he stopped attacking and you could just loot pinata him down like everybody would, would do it everybody would do it immediately and like if that was something that it would take them a month and some dlc to be able to fix that just nobody would buy the dlc until they were done with the loot pinata and there you go but yeah uh, that's true very true the, the fact that they're able to roll this out and just be like nope Nope, screw you. We see what you're doing there. Mike B. <laughs> firing into a cave for six hours. <laughs> Some of the gifts that I've seen. One of them was one of them was the end of uh the end of the Matrix trilogy where like they're in Zion and they're like shooting up into the into like the basically what's the the sphincter of Zion where all the machines are kind of pouring out. And mm. all the mechs are just firing their guns at the same time. And so it basically like superimposed all these little all these little loot gems like falling out of the hole. <laughs> <laughs> While everyone just stands around just shooting at it. <laughs> That's pretty uh, great. It became it totally became a thing. Like it was it it, it was it became the uh arrow to the knee uh for <laughs> destiny for this week. I mean yeah. next week it'll be something else, but they'll find the the loot house or something. Yeah. You know what? Uh, Shizzle actually already found something else. Uh, nice. So, so first off, it, it, like let, let, before we get into like Shizzle already finding something else, well, that, that's the end of the story. Shizzle found something else, basically. Yeah. Uh, but uh, <clears throat> the, the reason, there's this whole thing like, oh, you're not really playing the game. Uh, there is still a reason why people want to do this. Uh, they, they still, they, I think they said that they're going to buff loot drops in yeah. uh, other other events right and they and they have already like i was playing earlier uh and i was i was finishing up a queen's bounty and uh, -huh. uh it was to headshot 200 fallen so i equipped a hand cannon because it's just the easiest way to obviously like just if you hit then it's a headshot if not then you missed uh, is yeah, basically how much. that works yeah and i went to uh i went to earth and i went and did a patrol and I was just running around headshotting level two fallen, and I got like six or seven engrams in like twenty minutes. Really? Yeah. Because we, yeah, well, I should tell Shizzle because I don't think he knows. <laughs> well, he'll know by the well, time he watches this. <laughs> yeah, it just seems like, and like that was that was just what I was doing there. But it seems like because what they were saying in the 
uh, in the patch notes was that they were going to nerf the respawn timers of those things because the 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 reason that it was overpowered wasn't that it like they dropped a lot of loot per mob it was that yeah. they respawned in like six seconds seconds every time yeah mm -hmm. so you could kill millions of things in a hurry that way and just get yeah. tons of gear as a result uh, and so instead what they're doing uh because they understand that especially this early in the, the lifespan of a uh of an mmo every nerf needs to come with a buff somewhere else like yeah you can't you can't say, oh, the people that were playing this game for the first couple of weeks now have this huge advantage that nobody else can ever get. Like, that sucks. Oh, yeah. Uh, and that makes, that makes people like me who were behind the curve. Like, if the loot cave went away, I would feel crappy it, with no other, no other changes whatsoever. Because I'd be like, well, crap. Now, I, I guess I should have been going to the loot cave. Like, I actually found out about it yesterday. Uh, and I thought to myself, maybe I should go hang out at the loot cave for a little while. Uh, and then today it got removed and I was like balls. I missed my opportunity to, <laughs> to go hang out at the loot cave for a while But then like I started doing that bounty and like was raining engrams. So I was like, okay, maybe this isn't actually so bad Oh, that's um, good. Yeah, I even I, got a legendary engram in the crucible I don't know if they affected the crucible or not. Um, and of course I got a crappy blue out of it, but yeah, that's the way it goes Yeah, <laughs> but, oh, and only if you're the lowest scorer on the team. Yeah, that's how that works too Yeah, which I probably was uh, <laughs> um, one of the reasons why this became such a lucrative thing to do uh, was because when you're leveling up and you get rifles and you get what, uh, you know, pieces of armor and everything and you want to you know, upgrade them using you know, plat steel or whatever it is that your particular uh, class needs as a base upgrade material, mm -hmm. um, you only get that by basically sharding or dismantling uh, other pieces of gear. And the thing is, like, gear just was not dropping. Like, I mean, yeah. I, I did tons of stuff, and I, I did it. But, but the thing is, like, I want to upgrade something but, and try it out. You can see what's, like, upgraded before handing it off to swap out for something off the cell, else that's just flat out better. And if, they, if, if there's not enough loot for you to dismantle to upgrade the stuff that you're getting while you're leveling, then there's, like, zero point to putting any kind of progression or talent tree on the gear that you're leveling with if you're just going to replace it right away anyways. Yeah. So it's, like, just... Just make it fucking rain loot. Like, it could yeah. all be garbage, and that'd be fine. It could all be, gar well, you know, most yeah. of it could be garbage. As long as we have, we could get the materials from that door in order to actually experience the full potential of the pieces of gear that you're getting while you're leveling. That's, like, the reason why this cave was so uh, was so important to some people is because they wanted yeah. to actually try the gear out that they have. Yeah, I mean, it's just like Diablo, like... Uh, especially with Reaper of Souls, they sort of hit on the, we're just going to make loot drop all the time. No matter what you're doing, there's going to be loot everywhere. You're going to get legendaries, you're going to throw them away because you've got, yep. already got too many legendaries. Yep. And, like, that's something that just feels better if you're just constantly getting at least something. Even if you then look at it and go, well, I'm just going to vendor this or I'm just going to turn this into crafting materials or something. Like, you're getting something out of it. It's something that you know is valuable. I have, um, in Destiny, I, I have the last upgrade for my Stranger's Rifle that I still can't get because I just haven't gotten enough uh, weapons to break apart into weapon parts. No. Uh, and so I just I can't buy the upgrade. Uh, and I actually didn't even have enough spin metal until I decided to go hang out on Earth and headshot Fallen for a while. Is that how you um, get it? I thought I, I had to go around and like pick trees or something. You have, to, you have to pick it up off the ground, but like it's it's on Earth. And I okay. had no other reason to go to Earth. All so right. I just found it as I was running around, basically. Noted. Yeah. Um... But yeah, I think I think heading in the direction of loot pinata, but maybe the loot isn't that great, is a lot better. Especially if they're talking about um, like the legendary engrams. Like people have been talking about. <laughs> there's that there's that Twitter account actually, at legendary engram, which is kind of funny, because <laughs> it tweets crap like, <laughs> "I am that blue that you've seen four times already" or something. Uh, um, roses, are, roses are red. Your item is blue. Your engram was purple. Sucks to be you. <laughs> 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. It's great. Um you're wearing so many blue items, folks have taken to calling you Papa Smurf, hashtag <laughs> destiny problems. Yeah, exactly. So um like they were talking about the engrams earlier and the cryptarch and saying something along the lines of uh the Cryptarch thinks it's a grab bag of any number of things, but because it's this color, you think it's a legendary. 
and we haven't messaged that well, which to me means that they're going to stick with it's just a grab bag of all sorts of things, not that they're going to make legendary engrams always turn into legendaries. Yeah, that's good. And yeah, that's fine. I think if that's the case, then legendary engrams just need to drop a lot more often. Yes. Like, yes, that is absolutely true. Yeah, like it should not be nearly like you get one. You're like, oh, man, legendary. Like the one that I got in the crucible earlier was the first one that I'd gotten. And I was like, oh, legendary engram. And I looked at it and it was a heavy weapon. And I thought to myself, well, I don't really get to use my heavy weapon often in the crucible because I suck. And I die whenever I pick up heavy weapon app ammo hey, immediately. Stop being bad or get a mouse and keyboard. <sighs> I need to do probably <laughs> both of those things. Um, but yeah, so I was like, well, I'm not super worried about getting this. It's just going to be normalized anyway because I'm still in the crucible. <clears throat> so I didn't even worry about it. I was like, I thought to myself, it's just going to be some crappy blue regardless. Uh -huh. It ended up being a, a blue. It was still a fairly decent blue. It was better, a better rocket launcher than what I had, but I don't, like, I, I usually use the uh, uh, machine gun in the Crucible anyway. So, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so that's the story of the legendary engram that I got that I thought everyone <laughs> should know about. <laughs> that was deep, man. <laughs> but, you know, like, if it, if it was something that just happened more regularly, like, oh, I ran a strike, I got three legendary engrams to turn in. Like, I would care a little bit less if they all turned out to be crappy blues because then I could know that I could run another strike and get three more. Yeah, exactly. There's like, a chance there for it to be something yeah. else. Uh, what's yeah, nice exactly. is that at this level, like, unless you're farming Luke Cave, uh, at this level, <laughs> um, you're pretty much not ever going to see a green, like, uh, anywhere. If you're, le if you're running level-appropriate stuff, like, that's what's nice is that it just filters it out. So you... You just have a much higher chance of getting. Now, I'm sorry, you, you won't see a green engram. <laughs> uh. um, most everything that you get is, is going to be like a blue engram. You're not going to get a word a green engram. Uh, yeah. Because like, all green is shit anyway. So giving you a green engram is kind of like, oh, okay. Yeah. Like, <laughs> the, so I have just, to just talk to a guy before. I mean, I guess it gives you Cryptarch rep, but yeah. Yeah, which is, uh, which can actually be pretty, pretty. Uh, uh, yeah, I think once you get him to three, then every time you rank him up, starting at three afterward, every time you rank him up, he sends you a legendary engram, mm -hmm. which just means more blues, really. But but still, but still, it's yeah. like yeah, you get like three of them or something. Yeah, like it's like a little gift box or something, gift bag. It's kind of yeah. nice. I need to. I actually need to run more PVE. I think I I PVE'd all the way up to level twenty, and then since then I've been doing nothing but PVP. And I just feel like I'm not getting the gear that I should be getting. PvP but. is, yeah, PvP is hard to get good gear unless you're just lucky at the end of the match. But that's the problem is that yeah. you don't know until the end of the match if you got something. Like, yeah. killing people don't doesn't drop loot, <clears throat> uh, which would be kind of cool if, like, a blue popped off somebody. Because yeah. if, even if you didn't get a chance to go back and get it, the blue would still go to your mailbox Yeah. at the end of the match. But, um, yeah, just, just run, like, if you want blues, just run, like, PvP stuff. Or... Just rank up, rank yourself up as best you can. Uh, and yeah, get as I've many been. Things. I I went and bought one of the like warlock bands for uh, Dead Orbit, and I've mm -hmm. been working on that rep because I read that it's faster to because that way you can you can do any type of bounty and it'll go towards that rep instead of um, having to do it only in the Crucible or only in the Vanguard. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, I, I think getting item. getting everything up to like rank two to begin with, I think is pretty good. Like crucible rank two, you unlock a ton of gear, mm. uh, and then I'll, I'm going to turn around and then put it all into uh, like I don't know something else, like the FWZ or some shit. I don't know. Yeah, but we'll see, we'll see. But definitely still playing Destiny. Yeah, yeah. So it. this has been your Destiny update. <laughs> 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 don't get your ghosts up. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of top tier heavily anticipated MMOs and then speaking of other things uh, Trove <laughs> went into closed beta today yeah which is interesting Trove well, is interesting yeah actually. it's it's interesting from the perspective of I really like the concept okay like to me the idea of so let me start by explaining why I like Minecraft so much okay I like Minecraft because when I load into a game of Minecraft, I'm presented with this huge, infinite world that's n literally no one else has ever been to. And I feel like, this is cool, I can, I can walk around and I can explore, and 
I'm seeing things that I'm, I can't go look up a guide for where to get the best diamonds or yeah, something. Yeah, like there's no map. Yeah, exactly. I just wander around and I'm just looking, and it's totally cool. I mm. really, really like that. It's, that's that to me is the draw of Minecraft. The amount of times that like um, so my uh, my WoW guild, uh, which is since a long time ago, sort of transcended from being a WoW guild to just being a bunch of people that play games. Uh, we have a Minecraft server. And it's the sort of thing that we play for like a month and then forget about for like six months. And then someone goes, oh, we should run a Minecraft server again. And so <laughs> we, we do it again. And every time that comes out, I will play it like crazy for like a month. And yeah. then uh, I'll drop off because I feel like I've explored everything. And like, I don't, I don't want to just go wandering off out into nowhere and get lost. And it'll take forever for me to get back. So, yeah, that to me is the draw of Minecraft is that sort of exploring this area that nobody else has been in. And the idea of applying that in an MMO sense, um, obviously, it you would have to work pretty hard to make it into something that you can still do that explore, like, and not just okay, so this zoned in, and now everybody knows where this is. Um, but I still think it could be done. Like, I, I, I almost think about it, think about it from the perspective of something like Terraria, uh, where you go to a new planet, and maybe this new planet is something that's randomly generated and maybe the yeah. first few planets are not super random or or at least they were at some point but people have figured it out and then you go to another planet and that one is now randomly generated and it, maybe it's something that you just decide you're going to mine out and then leave and never go back mm -hmm. uh, or maybe it's some place excuse me that you decide to build a fortress on or something i don't know i think there's merit to the idea of that sort of sense of exploration and like brave new world sort of areas that you know you're, you're just exploring and you can just wander around and see new things i think there's merit to that in an mmo concept i don't think trove has particularly nailed that at the very least i don't know if trove has particularly nailed anything at the moment because i just have no idea what i'm supposed to be doing <laughs> <laughs> like so, yeah so i I had kind of a screwed up perspective of Trove for a while there, and it was totally my fault. Um, I, basically, I know better. So one thing I learned from you know doing doing this pretty regularly, like the whole gaming stuff, yep. something flying by or something out there, um, is don't get involved into a, in a game when it's early, early, early alpha. Yeah, because it's going to taint your impressions of the game. Until you get to play it again when it's like all better, which you, you, everyone's got the attitude. It's like, oh, well, it's beta. It's going to get better. It's going to get better. But try having that for like 60 games. Yeah. Like it's hard because out of that 60 games, realistically, only like maybe 55 of them are going to get or, 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 or sorry, five of them are going to like actually get better. Yeah. Uh, I played Trove and I actually I just fired it up. 0 0.0.2 0 .0 alpha. <laughs> When I played, there was like there was like six people on the server. Mm. Uh, it was it was nothing. It was brand new. And when you get in, you could tell like there was a little bit. There was combat stuff that was there, but there was like no depth or anything. Cornerstones weren't even in weren't even uh, in yet. Um, I played it today for a bit because you know you put it on the list and I was like, oh, that's right, it, it closed beta because because there's no sense of time or, or anything else is going on in the games industry when. Uh, when Destiny is, is in front of me, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, I went, I went, and I played it for a bit, and <clears throat> it's come a long way. <laughs> yeah, it has like even the character models changed. Like the character models used to have this really weird, like super long neck or long face, like horse head type. Weird, not horse head, but it's a long face type look, and it just looked really weird. Uh, and they've kind of kind of made it a little bit more stumpy. Um, Everything else kind of feels the same as our combat and all that stuff, but like the building portion sounds uh, feels good. The cornerstone stuff is amazing. Like to basically, it's basically fucking pocket, pocket home or I don't know what you want to call it, <laughs> <laughs> pocket workshop. Like anything you put on this little piece of land, you can go to another piece of land that's marked and hit E, and it will bloop. Like your 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 chunk of land that was oh, previously on the other side of the world will show up there. So all of your little like workshop stuff and all that will will be right there, mm. but only only in those certain areas though. Like those 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 little plots of lands are not like necessarily like all over the place, but uh, but still it's um it's an interesting it's it's still interesting and honestly it's come a long way like a long freaking way 
And if they did that much, you know, from alpha to, to you know, now closed beta, uh, I'm actually really interested now to see what they do between now and, uh, and open beta. Yeah, it's, I mean, I, I, I really want the game to do well because I want, like, I love the, the concept behind it, like I was explaining before. I just, like, the problem I was having, and this is almost certainly just because it's closed beta and not, like, release. I just sort of, like, I, there was signs around, and I was like, oh, cool, it has a tutorial. And I was, like, following the signs, and I went through the tutorial, and I got out of the tutorial, and I was like... The first sign tells you to jump in the lava, which that was pretty great. <laughs> yeah, that, that is pretty good. It does tell you to then get out of the lava, but, yeah. Um, yeah, I got through the tutorial area, and then it was like, okay, now you're in the hub. Good luck. And I'm, I still don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. Really, <laughs> really no idea what the point of this game is. Like, do I, do I go and find a cornerstone and say, this is my cornerstone now? Like, do I, and I guess like the different adventure areas that you can go to can be random and sometimes they'll like, when all the missions in them are completed, they'll just be like gone or I don't know. The game just does not do a great job of explaining how it works to the player. It's, I don't it's think. hard. To, it's hard to say that it's like Minecraft because the only similarities it has between um, the only similarities between Trove and Minecraft is the fact that you could build stuff with voxels. Mm. Uh, other than that, like seriously, the it's it, and you know it, it's it's like Cube World if you play Cube World, yeah, um, or like Vox, uh, where you have uh, a world that you, it's basically like an action RPG that you could build in uh, with mm. lots of you know cubes uh, or yeah, you know, cubes. Um, you don't have tools that I noticed. Like everything, in order yeah. to break things down, uh, you basically just use like laser beams. And it was like this in Alpha too, which I thought they would change that. I thought that was just temporary, but yeah, um, you just basically shoot pew pew pew, and you get like you know primal purple block and primal red block and whatever. Like it's not grass or like I went. I'm in an area like a haunted forest, and I'm like pew 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 pew. Shoot up the floor, primal purple block, and then I shoot a tree, primal purple block, and then I shoot the yeah. leaves, primal purple block. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and it's like okay, so I get it. So this yeah. this zone is just this thing. Yeah, and I kind of like. I think maybe the aesthetics of it is something that sort of turns me off a little bit because, like you say, it's just like primal purple block, primal red block, and so on and so forth. It's not like I'm digging in dirt or yeah, I'm, I'm cutting dirt. through stone or mm -hmm. anything like that. So it doesn't feel like an actual world. Like it feels like Legos. Like yeah, this. <laughs> They really should have been pitching this thing to Lego and licensing it as a Lego game because I probably would have been more interested in it because then at least there would be that sort of like trigger in my head that says, okay, this isn't actually like a world. This is some Legos that I'm running around on or something. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't know. It just, it doesn't feel like it, it was really, really fun for about 30 minutes. And then I just started to sort of go, okay, I don't, I don't know at all what I should be doing like should I <laughs> should I just start building something here or is it like I was in an adventure area so I, I thought I probably shouldn't build something here because this is an adventure area and I think those go away uh but yeah like it it was like go and explore and do things and I'm like okay how do I find things I don't know what I'm doing <laughs> I don't know it was a very very confusing experience to me um and I know, like, I'm sure in the comments or whatever, people are going to be like, hey, you dumbass, go read this website and go do this other thing. I, <sighs> this, this might be a little bit hypocritical as someone who, like, made, like, my uh, break into the, uh, uh, the online, like, podcasting and so on uh, sort of scene was in telling other people how to do stuff. I really don't like feeling like in order to play this game at all I have to go and look up some guide like I don't know that really bothers me yeah you don't want to look up a guide for a game you're playing I don't it's not that I don't want to look up a guide it's that I feel like the the only time that I should have to look up a guide is when I already know basically how the game is played uh and I want to do it better not necessarily that I just have no idea what I should even be doing like um, I use Destiny as an example. If you 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 loaded up Destiny and you sat down and there wasn't the uh, the ghost telling you where to go, and you're just standing there and there's a bunch of cars around and you look around you, uh, 
what what would you actually do? Like, I you'd you'd wander off and get lost and probably not ever actually play the game anymore. It's the sort mm-hmm. of thing that to me like there needs to there just needs to be something that tells me what I should do. Like, what how do I play your game? What is the what is the enjoyable part of this game? Is the enjoyable part supposed to be the running around because this isn't really doing it for me? Right. Is the enjoyable part supposed to be that I can pick blocks up off the ground because that also isn't really doing it for me? Like I don't I don't know what I'm supposed to do to have fun in Trove. I guess is a better way to put it. Like I don't there's nothing that says try this, it could be fun or try that, it could be fun. It just sort of says welcome to Trove. This is a cornerstone. Have fun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I mean, to to I mean, just to kind of back it up a little bit, it's 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 still in closed beta. Yeah, yeah, for so sure. So some some of that stuff could definitely happen. We've seen, I mean, uh, yeah, you and I both, and everyone, honestly, a lot of you guys who've watched this, uh, you've been through the, you've run the gamut with us, uh, where you play something in in closed beta or even open beta, and like the starter experience is terrible, and then. Yeah. And then later on, like they add some starter experience or something that, yeah. uh, like, like an like an actual experience uh, that really kind of changes the way that the game plays out. Yeah. The amount of um, games that have even like taken their existing starter experience and completely scrapped it to make a new one because they recognize that this was an issue. Uh, that it, I would not be surprised at all if that sort of thing happens with Trove, where they just go, "The way that we introduce people to the game right now doesn't work, so let's start it again from scratch." Yeah, it's like, totally. Would not surprise yeah. me at all. Yeah, when you when you when you go when you play, I mean, literally, this is the way it works. You 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 spawn, and there's a sign, and then there's lava, and basically, what they want you to do is it's like you hit Q to activate your potion, right, your health pot, and then they're like jump in the lava, swim across. You get to the other side, and you hit Q to use it, and then there's a little thing there, and it says, "Go ahead and refill your thing here." This little weird bonfire thing. Okay, great. You refill your potion there. Uh, and then you turn around and it says, build a couple blocks to make stairs, right, to go up this wall. You scale this wall by building a couple blocks, and then uh, then you pretty much, I think after that, you pretty much leave. But um, it's it's so basic. While the game itself is very basic, um, it doesn't, there are signs around that tell you stuff, but it, it does leave a little bit open to, like, if I wasn't following the game, and, and uh, I would probably be a little bit lost at first. But, yeah, like it teaches you how to react to things that might happen to you, but then it puts you in a situation where those don't happen unless you force them upon yourself. So you're like, okay, I know how to drink a potion, but why would I ever want to fight something to be able to like put myself in a position where I need to drink this potion? What's the point of fighting this guy? What do I get out of that? I know that I can build these blocks to go over a wall, but why would I want to go over that wall? Like, yeah. what? what's the... What's the breadcrumb that I'm I'm chasing after? What I've got I've got the stick. Where's my fucking carrot? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, it's funny when you, when you said that you don't want you don't want to go and watch like videos or tutorial tutorials on this stuff. Um, I think that's really funny because I noticed that again today. Like like every time I start a new game, like I always pop into Reddit uh, into that subreddit, and there's always videos. Yeah. That you know discuss how certain things work. The was worth constant. The fact that it works on everything that's in these subreddits, it pisses me off. You know what the what? Do you know what the was worth constant is? I did at one point, but it's, I don't remember. So basically, what it is is you skip the first thirty percent of a uh, of a video to get to the actual content. Yes. Um. Like yeah, it's like thirty percent or something like that. But yeah, it's it works so often it's mind boggling, and that's why it's become a thing. Like the was was worth constant. It's it's not like some scientist. I think it's like some dude who's all like, "Oh, it's funny if you do this thing." Blah blah. But um, it is. It's 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 some of the stuff that happens at the beginning of videos is mind numbing. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I tried to watch a like, uh, Trove beginner's guide video earlier because I was like, well, I'll figure this out, and I loaded it up, and it was twenty five minutes, and I was like, oh, I guess there's a lot to do. And no, it was like the first five minutes were a lot of ums and ahs and uh, like explaining uh, about uh, how. Like the the one in particular, I'm not gonna call out the actual video itself, but like, I'm going to try to not say things that would indicate it because I I don't think that this guy deserves any hate over it or anything. Uh, but like, he was talking about how he had made some other video and it was wasn't very good, so he was going to make a new one, 
for like the first two minutes of the video and i'm like i don't care that you made a different video yeah, i'm not watching that I video know. yes <laughs> i'll call I me mean, i'll call one well not call it out but i, I when the luke cave thing happened i was like oh, what, what is all this and shizzle linked me a video and he goes just mute the audio and fast forward a bit and yeah. i was all like no like i don't want to do that i want to listen to the audio right so i put it on i i set aside the wilds with constant and i was like i'm just gonna watch this thing and it was a guy with an australian accent and he talked about how he was Australian uh, and how crazy we must think it is that he's Australian or something like that. Like, it, it, I actually don't remember everything he said because it was just like a circle jerk of himself, 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 himself. Yeah. And then it finally got to the content, like probably minutes in or, or oh. And it's and just I know like, what? just if you're going to make a video to teach somebody something and you want to get views on it and you yeah. want people to take you seriously... Skip the bullshit. Yeah, exactly. Get in, like, do it, get out, done. Yeah, I get why it happens because especially when it's like one of the first videos that you've made and you're, you've got this idea in your head that I'm going to make this video and it's going to blow up and everybody's going to love my video, but they might not love this part, so I should explain why that part is like that. And they might not love this part, so I should explain that. And you sort of feel like, you, you start to feel the need to make excuses for how crappy your video is about to be at the start of your video. Yeah, and the end result of that is people watch it and they go, "Oh, so this video sucks," is what you're saying, and they yeah. don't want to watch oh, any more of it. Man. So, like the, that, just tip to online content creators: get to the freaking point. Yeah, like, like don't, I, don't, don't dick around. And if you know you're gonna do a series on things, and I don't know if I'm guilty of this, but I know that right now I wouldn't do it. But when I when I started the uh, the the um, Crash Course series for Warframe. Uh, which comes up a lot because it was my it, it was a series that I actually sat down and I kind of penciled in. I was like, I'm gonna do this this way, and I did it, and it was successful. So it was like, okay, this obviously works. Yeah. Um, but if you know you're gonna do a series of videos on, on basically the same game or the same relative subject, uh, don't waste time at the beginning of uh, your first one in that series explaining what it's going to be, unless it's a sequence. But in my case, it was like it's covering different classes of a thing inside of a game. So there is no order to that. Mm. So if somebody's watching three and then they get to one, it's all like in the first two minutes, I'm talking about how this is this series is going to talk about this and that, whatever. And we're going to cover this. And I'm hoping that you guys like it. You should like, favorite, subscribe. Like in the first two minutes, I'm talking about or, or, or how crazy my American accent is. Like I'm talking <laughs> about this shit for the first two minutes. Yeah. <laughs> it's 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 it does not fit in that sequence. And that's yeah. what's going to happen. If you feel the need to explain all of that, that's fine. Do it in a different video. Yes, absolutely. Like, and do a town. video that says... Hey, check out my new series that I'm starting. Here's a link to this first episode in this series or whatever. Yep. And then go into explaining about how your, your I don't know, Martian accent is hilarious. And that's so much better. People, <laughs> Martian, that's so <laughs> much better. People will appreciate it because then you can actually open up a dialogue with the people that are following you, right? And the people that are interested in what you're doing. You could tell them, you'd be like, hey, here's a little insight to what I'm thinking for this series. I want to do yeah. this and I want to cover it this way. And I'm thinking, like, whatever, like, and you just lay it out for them. And you well, can open like a up this dialogue the with them. Sort of it thing. is, exactly. Yeah. People love behind the scenes. I don't know why. Behind the scenes is usually pretty boring. But yeah. <laughs> I, I was always tempted to do a behind the scenes of like. I was always tempted to do like a behind the scenes of like the weekly marmot or something, which would just be the hour that I spend in Adobe Premiere. <laughs> editing Dude, you should totally do that. Together, just have yeah. a camera. Oh, it's too late for that, I guess. But yeah, I did do. Uh, there was an episode that I edited. Like uh, I don't remember. It might have been episode one hundred. That I did live. It's probably gone now because Twitch purged all the old past broadcasts. I probably should have went back and found it. Oh, uh, that's right. Fuck. Yeah. Like, but like I, I edited the whole thing live, and then at the end of it, I played it back. Is like because like I recorded the whole thing live, and I was like, okay, this is gonna be weird because I'm going to talk for a second, and then I'm gonna stop talking, and then I'm gonna read something off of a paper. And then I'm going to talk again for a second. And you guys are going to be really weirded out by the way that I, I go through this whole thing. And then I went and I edited the whole thing in Premiere. And I was streaming the whole time. Um, and at the end of it, I was like, okay, cool. It's done now. And I just played it back through using the, uh, the preview window. And I was like, this is the final project. And it was a cool enough idea, but people were so bored. <laughs> like, <laughs> it was so dull to actually uh, watch. You know who did that? Um, Phil DeFranco, when he was, like, popular, right? Mm. Uh, do you know who that is? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so 
he 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 did this video that was uh it was very interesting because it gave me a little insight into how they do certain things and how uh, things move the whole jump cut thing right yeah. which which I, I still think is okay, uh, but... I, I uh, think jump cuts are fine, honestly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I still think it's okay, uh, and I think it's okay to exploit it a little bit for some hilarity, but um, it's... To watch him, he posted a video that was, like, probably a minute long. It was just an excerpt from a certain thing, but he didn't have the audio on. He just had music playing. Just so you could watch him and see his mannerisms and the way it was in between mm. his takes. He would say something, still looking at the camera, and then pause for a minute, and then, like... Start talking again. Da, 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 da. And it was almost like he was just holding that pose for a minute just to kind of gather his thoughts on the next thing he was going to say. And then he would say that thing. And then he'd pause for a second. And then he would say something else. And it was like when you watch it, it's like, oh, okay. And then he just cuts out all the in-between stuff. And it gives him a nice gap so that if he needs to do a jump cut or an edit or something to redo a reshoot, he could totally do it easily. Yeah. Because there's yeah, gaps it's also, there. It's also good if you're... Uh, if you just want to be able to compose your thoughts a little bit in between sentences, like if you if you want to have something where you're getting across a point very very quickly and directly, mm -hmm. it's good to have a good idea of exactly what you're going to say before you start talking, because otherwise you get into points where you actually I'm doing it right now where you <laughs> you kind of have to slow down a little bit and uh, just kind of think about what the rest of your sentence is going to be. And that's not nearly as entertaining as if I had been able to say that entire sentence from the beginning to the end in one breath without having to stop to think about what I was going to say. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was so meta. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, pretty much so, that. So, anyway, Trove. So, yeah, Trove is a lot like jump cuts. <laughs> this is exactly like, how did that even happen, man? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, right, because we were talking about watching uh, videos to learn how to trove, and some of them were awful. That's yes. how we got there. That's yeah. right. That is correct. Great. So, yeah, I am still hopeful for trove. Uh, I do not regret my $5 credit purchase to be able to get into the closed beta, because I, I didn't have access to it previously. Um, I will definitely be poking at it some more. Uh huh. I am worried that it sort of suffers from... Uh, I don't know what, what really to call the syndrome or whatever, but when you you want a game to be something and then it's actually something entirely different, so you're really super disappointed in it, even if the game itself is actually really good, like, you're looking at it and you're thinking, <laughs> You mean kind of like Destiny? <laughs> <laughs> well, sure, yeah. A lot of people wanted Destiny to be like this big... Uh, like super involved narrative with heavy storytelling and so on and it's basically it's basically Diablo with first person shooter mm -hmm. like you you kill things to get better loot to kill things to get better loot to kill things to get better loot and so on and so forth and yeah there's there's raids and there's more content coming but it's it's people are like oh Destiny's just grinding it's like well yes yes it is <laughs> that's the point like um, I was streaming it earlier, and people were saying people. Uh, someone, someone in my chat was said something like, "People have been calling this grind the game. How do you feel about that?" And I'm like, "Well, if the gameplay is fun, I don't really care if I'm grinding." Like, yeah, that's yeah, that is there, absolutely it. Yeah, like there, there just needs to be something there to make me feel like I'm not wasting my time, which is a crazy concept for a video game, anyway. <laughs> and like every once in a while I'm like how did we even get to this point video games where I have to be <laughs> earning something for this to be considered like I'm, I'm not just totally wasting my time on this but anyway like I, I think it's fine like I like shooting things in, in video games I like first person shooters this is a first person shooter that every once in a while I get something that makes me a little bit nicer cool I am 100% on board if you were expecting like a big uh, even like a Halo esque, which Halo honestly, like the story was decent, but it wasn't ever like breakout amazing. I wouldn't say. I don't know, man. They I'm sure people would be mad at me they, about they, that. They had some moments. It had some it, moments. They definitely had some moments, and like especially the first Halo, I remember like being really, really into the story at a couple of points. Um, but like I, I think it, Destiny's current narrative doesn't live up to even Halo. Um, in terms of how it's like presented and laid out and what the actual story is and everything like you get this sort of immediate I, I think a lot of people were expecting that like when you start playing destiny and it's like okay basically the apocalypse the travelers dying there's the darkness attacking they were expecting that by the time they were finished playing destiny 
they would have beaten the darkness and the traveler would be saved and that's the end of it. Yeah, they would know what the travel yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like everything we I'm going to have resolved all of the issues in the world by the end of this. And it's like so, <laughs> No, no, you you basically you shoot some zombies and that's about it. Uh, yeah, pretty much. But, but yeah. it's uh but it's still a fun game for some reason. It is. I appreciate that we went from destiny to trove to back into destiny. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Don't Get Your Hopes Up, where every topic is just destiny in disguise. Don't get your ghosts up, bro. Don't get your ghosts up. Yeah. <laughs> destiny, oh get your God. ghosts up. Good. Oh, man. Destiny, 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 destiny. Destiny, 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 destiny. <laughs> and destiny. We're not ending it like that. <laughs> no. No. Uh no, because we still. Do you want to? Do you want to talk about this other one, or should we? Should we punt this? Um. Yeah, it's kind. It's kind of interesting. I mean, it's, it's, it is it, interesting. It's, it's it's. So so basically, what's happening is um, everybody knows the Oculuses. Yeah. Oculus Rift. There's Oculus VR, uh, which it sounds like it's more of a platform than anything. Um, they're hooking up with what was it, Samsung? Right? Yeah. And they're making a uh, a. a proprietary ish because nothing android is proprietary okay yeah it's a proprietary ish uh system that would pair a note to a to a custom headset that would support that note yeah, yeah and i think every, everybody who's seen this uh a lot of people have probably already seen the um the the, the joke image which is like oh i just hold my iphone in front of my eyes vr yeah. right that's yeah. exactly what like, they're doing well there's actually like people have made like headband things that you can set your uh set your iphone or whatever in and then use an app that will then like render two images on the screen so that mm -hmm. it almost kind of works that way yeah yeah so they they, they made this announced that they're going to do this uh and i think what's interesting is for the release of, of said product which apparently costs between 100 and 200 dollars. i guess they're not sure yeah plus uh, a plus a galaxy note 4 which is like 600 dollars <laughs> if you yeah. don't already own one, which oh my God. I think most people probably don't already own one. <laughs> Just buy a fucking Oculus Rift. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Uh, but it it's going to... Um, the, the the marketplace is proprietary, actually. It's it's the mm -hmm. Oculus VR. It's only, you, the apps are only for that. Yep. Which the, that was actually probably the most interesting part. Yeah, definitely. Like, the basically... If you if you get a uh, if you get a Galaxy Note four, uh, first of all you should have gotten an LG G three. What's wrong with you? But second of all, uh, <laughs> you can get you you you've got a Galaxy Note four, and then you can get a Gear VR, and then you compare the two of them, and then you can play games that were created for people who fall into that exact category of people. <laughs> like <laughs> it's so it's so silly. And, and, yeah. and but going back to like the whole proprietary ish, it's like uh, with the hardware wise. It's like it's Android. Just yeah. just root something else and and set it up so you could sync it to this device and you're pretty yeah. much done. Yeah, I'm sure within like a week someone will have found out some way to root either your other Android phone or the Gear VR or something. Uh exactly. and then it'll work on something else. Like there's even uh I've seen uh so the Sony has their Xperia phones and they're coming out with a new one that will actually do the PlayStation Live. Um, or not PlayStation Live. What's the term they use for it? You know how if you have a uh, PlayStation, PlayStation now. Vita? PS Now. PS Now, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. You, you know, if you have a PS Vita, you can, like, over a Wi-Fi network or something, you can connect to your PlayStation at home and play your... You could like, play Destiny anywhere on your PS Vita, um, which makes me really want a PS Vita, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> play Destiny on the go. Yeah. They're apparently one of the new Sony phones. Uh, I want to say it's the Xperia Z3 uh, mm -hmm. is going to have that functionality. And there's already people that are finding ways to make it work on, on other Android phones. Of so, course. Yeah. So I, I fully expect that this will not remain proprietary to the, the Galaxy Note 4. But I'm more worried about, like... How are they going to get developers to even make stuff? Especially since, like, one of the big things about this whole story is that they're saying, oh, for the first week, all of the apps are going to be free. And, like, you think about it and you go, oh, that's an interesting marketing strategy. Yeah, like, they want, they want people to buy 
uh, buy this right away because in the first week everything is going to be free. And then they like had some interview about it and they said, oh no, it's not a marketing thing. We just haven't finished making it so that you can buy stuff yet. <laughs> we haven't developed a payment structure for the Oculus VR That's not app. good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. They, like... So don't launch. <laughs> like delay your launch yeah. by a week. Jesus. Yeah, and and also the uh, the people who actually sell the product, the, the apps, the, the developers aren't going to get shit for this. Yeah, I know. Like, so if if you if you have a note already, spend like a hundred bucks, two hundred bucks, whatever it is, and just buy all the apps. Or I'm sorry, just download all the apps. You're not yeah. buying anything. All all none of them that are likely to exist because every developer said, okay, well if I'm not going to make money, I'm not going to develop for this. Why yeah, would I do true. that? That's right. That's true. <laughs> like, unless it's somehow like a super easy transition that they can do for basically free if their game already supports like the Oculus Rift or something. Like, if there's some way, but that's that's not like it's still gonna have to be an Android app in some capacity. And I I I don't know a ton about Android development, but I know that you can't just take like Portal and decide that now it's an Android app. Like, it doesn't work. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. yeah. Also, I just had another weird thought about this. Go ahead. How do you control anything in this? So, yeah, I was thinking about that, too. I'm guessing it's going to be some kind of a Bluetooth controller or something. Um, yeah, maybe. It's going to sync to your head movement, so it syncs to the device, and then you can move around. So if it's syncing to the device using anything other than a direct connection cable, like USB, then... Yeah, like, do you do you hold onto the phone and just sort of guess where the buttons on the screen are that you can't see because you're wearing an yeah, because you're wearing VR? it. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know. I have no idea. If it's gonna, probably it's got to come with some kind of controller or something. Yeah, this to me sounds like Samsung being Samsung and throwing hundreds of millions of dollars at things whenever they can mm, and saying, yeah. "Well, this would be a nice perk to get people to buy the Galaxy Note 4. This would be a good marketing strategy. You can get this cool little extra toy as far as they're concerned. Um, and I, I don't think that... Like, if this was something that Oculus was coming out with that would then work for every Android phone in some capacity, then cool. And also, if developers were able to actually make money off of the games that they develop it for it, that would also be a, a good thing. Mm -hmm. Like, I already am, am worried that the Oculus Rift, even, is going to have issues of getting people to develop for it. Because, like, if you want a fully immersive... Like, sure, there's, there's games like Valkyrie and stuff that have been announced for it already and even playable for it already. Uh, and there's, there's, there's obviously some games that the Oculus Rift will work for. But uh, the, the gaming industry, especially with platforms like this, is all about reaching critical mass and getting to that point where people can say, I will make back our, we, we, we will make back our money if we develop a title for this platform. Yeah. That's something that I think is... Um, I like. I think the Oculus Rift will probably be fine, but it's something to at least like be thinking about when looking at the long-term um, prosperity of the Oculus Rift. For something that's a hundred to two hundred dollars and only works yeah. with a specific, well, only works out of the box with a specific Samsung smartphone. Which, by the way, Samsung has. They're going to replace that smartphone in three to four months anyway. Yeah, they're I know. Come out with a better I know. One. Exactly. It's it's such it's such a weird thing. It's just like they're just yeah, you're right. They're just throwing money at something. It's like yeah. obviously nobody, not a single person that's reading this or sorry that's, that's listening to this, uh, would actually buy this thing, yeah. right? And and honestly, the majority of you probably didn't even know this was a thing. Yeah. But just just know that this is this is, this type of setup where you're gonna create something so super proprietary. Like you already know this they, people people actually do this kind of thing, and it's or companies do this kind of thing, and it's fucking ridiculous. But yeah. think about the, from a from, obviously from a developer standpoint, like getting developers to to create games just for that is ridiculous in and of itself. Uh, especially when the uh, the Oculus Rift, which costs a little bit more, apparently, <laughs> uh, will get you a ton of games that exist on the PC platform. So a developer, even an indie developer, on like Space Engineers, apparently, I think it has a function for, uh, or maybe it's a mod uh, for the VR. Uh, they can, on their PC version that they already have out, just put in some kind of adjustment or something to adapt to that resolution so you could experience the game 
uh, in that state. Obviously, there's a little bit more to that uh, than just that, but still, it's like if if it was open and it allowed you to play any app, obviously some apps would not really work very well on it. Um, then I think more people would be on board with it, and they would have a much more robust marketplace because people already, who already have stuff on the marketplace could just put in an Oculus mode or yeah. something on the device. Yeah. There's just so much that's weird about this particular setup. But it's just, I don't, I don't even know, Samsung, what are you doing? What are you even doing, man? <laughs> what are you even what doing? Are you doing? I'm going to get an Oculus Rift, dude. Oh, my God, it's going to be so amazing. Yeah. I, 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 my re- main reason for actually like, you know, being like, yeah, let's talk about the story is because I just want to be like, damn, I want an Oculus Rift. It's <laughs> <laughs> so bad. Yeah. I haven't had a chance to use one yet. I've heard everyone that I know that has, like, I'm super skeptical. But everyone that I know that has used one has been like, oh my god, they're so good. They're so much fun. So I'm like, okay, well, apparently I'm just being skeptical for no reason, I guess. <laughs> like, these are apparently, it's apparently, it works. So cool. I just want to try one at some point when I have go the opportunity. Any, go to any convention. I know. I was supposed to go to, well, the last two PAXs, like, I was supposed to go to, but had something come up and wasn't able to go. E3 so. is right down the street. Oh, but someone was at your house. Yeah, like friends or something, right? Uh, something. Yeah, I had somebody in town for E3. Uh, <sighs> and also, like, at the time, I didn't have a car, so I didn't really have a great way to get there. Uh, that's a problem. Yeah. In LA. Yeah. Of all like, places. I had a, I even had, like, a, I had my pass and everything all set up. I just didn't end up making it down there. Uh, dude, so I, I, I use, I played the, with the DK2, um, uh, the developer kit too, which is the better of obviously the two, right? Right. Um, I played Valkyrie, and the response was amazing. Uh, the the ability to kind of look around in the ship and look up and everything, like when you're in a dogfight simulator, which is basically what Valkyrie is. Um, and somebody like I was doing crazy shit that I normally wouldn't do any unless I was just you know kind of being palsy. But it's because I knew the size of my ship by looking around. Mm. Like I could look around and look at my ship and see roughly how big it is. I had a better feel for the environment, you know, my immediate environment, the ship itself. Uh, that I was able to fly like really close and underneath and in between, like you know, these structures that they had out in in this uh, arena that they had. Uh, and it just felt good. Like it felt really good and very responsive. Someone flies overhead, I can actually look and follow them. And you could you you could lock on using your missiles, right? By by doing that, uh, by following mm. them with your with your head. Oh, nice. Um yeah, it was just it just added a completely different level. Uh I watched Flitz, you know Flitz, right? Yeah. I watched Flitz play um like some dungeon crawler. I don't know. It looked like an old school like grid like first person dungeon crawler, right? Mm. Uh and all I know is he was kind of creeping around this corner and something like shows up behind him and like I'm watching him move and play and I was like, "Wow, that looks that looks really really fun like to be able to sit there and, and, and play a game that you're like, especially a scary game. I'd play more scary games too. Uh, yeah. But to be able to play this game that you feel so immersed in that when like this thing showed up, like he, he flipped the fuck out. Like, I could not <laughs> believe like he ducked and he was like screaming and he was panicking. And I was like, that looks so fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, I want one. Before it goes like into some kind of crazy proprietary state or something like Facebook, the D- yeah, right. <laughs> like I'm worried that the next and then there's gonna be no more DK two. It's gonna be like a thousand dollars on eBay. It's like let me just lock one in now. Yeah. Yep. <sighs> so there's your uh, there's your Oculus Rift update. Yeah. Destiny and the Oculus Rift. <laughs> so what what are you gonna do tonight? Uh, I'm probably gonna eat some food at some point. Oh, okay. I haven't well, eaten food yet. Eh. Maybe, uh, maybe shoot some internet space wizards. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I've decided that's what Destiny is, is internet space wizards. Because, <laughs> I mean, why not, really? Uh, yeah, I'm actually going to uh, jump on and run a, um, I guess, the weekly strike or weekly, weekly something. I don't know what it is. Mm. But uh, it's going to give me credit for something. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to do, I don't know. <laughs> Something, yeah, probably. I'm gonna go do something in a game. Get, I, I all I know is at the end I'm gonna get a piece of loot that could potentially be better than what I have, and that is That's the goal plan. of this game. I still haven't run any of the strikes past the very first one. Oh, well, damn, yeah. son. Yeah, <laughs> I should probably do that. You should probably do that. You say you're 20, right? Uh, 21. Yeah. 
21. Okay, okay. So you're definitely high enough level to basically do whatever you want. Yeah. Except for Vault of Glass. Uh, yeah. <laughs> pretty much. Which I don't even know anybody to do Vault of Glass with. So, and I'm I'm fine with that. Like, I'm, it sounds fun, but I just don't have the time for it right now. Dude, it's only 12 hours. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, no, actually, I think uh, we have a speedrun chart um, on uh, on our site uh, on DestinyDB.com. But mm. uh, we have a speedrun chart now for like every, basically like every hard and above or something, like heroic and above or something like that. Um, uh, strike or, or even the Volta Glass. We just did Volta Glass, which apparently was a huge pain in the ass to program. Um, but these dudes are running it in 37 minutes and 41 seconds or something like that. Hmm. It's, but these are like level 29s for the most part that they're that are running it like this. But still, it's like, it's, it, I, I said at the beginning, it's like when they first did it 12 hours, we're like, oh my God, it takes 12 hours. I'm never going to do this. It's like, come on. Like, think about like when the first raid tier is released yeah. on WoW. And it takes you three weeks. And then, yeah, you two days later, you're like, oh, just farm everything. It takes us four hours. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So yeah, 37 minutes is actually not bad at all. Um, I think yeah. that was normal. Uh, they just actually beat it on hard, which took them uh, like another 12 hours or something like that. But yeah, it's just something you you eventually gear yourself into uh, to be able to actually play it and not die yeah. 1,600 times per team. Yep. That's fine. Oh, I heard that uh, one of the Destiny updates, now that we're talking about Destiny for the fifth time this <laughs> this Fuck. podcast, uh, I heard that one of the updates they're actually making is like there's a... Wow, excuse me, suddenly all of the burps. Uh, there's a bug or something in the game right now that's, like, making the strikes way harder than they're supposed to be. So, Which I thought was fine, except for the bullet sponge thing. Yeah, like, the bullet sponge thing is, like, specifically what they said is that some of the bosses are doing more damage to players than they should be, and that, like, the bosses are taking less damage. Like, their armor oh. is set way super high or something. That makes sense. Yeah. Like, I always thought it was weird, like, fighting the, the like, tank things the, the spider tank spider tank yeah yeah like shoot the leg Walker. so that the weak point can come out and you're like okay and you shoot the leg and it does 75 damage and like what <laughs> what that was even and, yellow numbers like and what you shoot it like a thousand times yeah and I then mean, finally it's I, like I oh here's a weak thing, point yeah. for three seconds you can do a hundred damage oh man i know you like run in, you like you run in, you try to dunk on him and drop a grenade and then yeah. throw your heavy at it, and then he drops those like yeah. the those area grenades out. They he pops them out, those little mortars, and then you die. And you're like, had, oh fuck. I had one of the queen bounties, which I've apparently now I've heard that are they're a total waste of time. Uh but I had one of the queen bounties that I was working on, which was to kill three spider tanks. I did that last night. Uh, and then I went and did the same strike five times without dying. Uh and you know what? As much as I was like, oh, God, here we go. Like, I was okay with it because I felt like I was accomplishing something. Yeah. <laughs> this is the Diablo, like, mentality. It's yeah, exactly. I've, I, I've turned a one out of five into a two out of five. So <laughs> I'm not wasting my time. This is good. Uh, I killed that spider boss. So first I did it on patrol. So uh, real quick, for everybody that's listening right now, they're like, really? We're going to talk about this. Like, this is, like, the only time that Laura and I actually get to talk throughout the week because <laughs> we're so true. busy. So you guys are going to be subjected to some of this bullshit yeah. sometimes. We're sorry. very sorry, but we're not. Yeah, uh, sorry, we're not sorry. Sorry, not sorry. Uh, but it, you, you go in patrol mode, and then you go to the area, and the spider boss is there. And he has, yeah, that's uh, how I did it. Yeah, it was... so it, that's you, I soloed that a few times, and then I went into the strike, and I'm doing the strike. I get to the, the spider boss, and we kill the spider boss, and the other two dicks that I was matchmaked up with, they left because they were doing what I just did by myself. <laughs> And I'm like, you guys, uh, and I had, I had to fight the stupid eyeball boss by myself. I did that three oh, that's times. Right, it doesn't backfill. Yeah. Yeah. I, I did that like three times. And then finally on the fourth time, it did actually backfill. I got some couple people that showed up. And then the fifth time, like Therm showed up. And <laughs> he's all like, you know, he's all like, oh, hey, I call him. He's probably like, hey, like doing, level man? 50 by now or something. I know. He's all like, hey, so I got this mission to do five strikes without dying. I'm like, oh. <laughs> How many times have you done it for so far? He's like, one. I was like, all right, well, I'm going to bed. <laughs> See you later. Oh, poor Dude, it was like 1230. I mean, he's Australia or something. So it's yeah, like. That's what he mm. gets for living on the wrong side of the planet, I guess. Yeah, dude. Jeez. I don't know. It's a perfect time to play with Chisel every day. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. So that's it. 
Yeah. I, I downloaded Chasm. I'm going to play that a little bit, I think. Mm. Uh, I played a little bit of Wasteland 2. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I saw someone kill Total Biscuit in Wasteland 2, and it made me interested in the game. <laughs> that, that sounded a lot worse than I meant it. I, the gameplay and the way it worked made me interested because it looked like old school Fallout. Not because he killed Total Biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, I'm not really into this kind of game, but um, uh, a buddy of mine, uh, he said he, he said it to me, and uh, now I'm just like, all right, I gave it a shot, and uh, it's actually right. I kind of enjoy it. Like hmm. the the it's definitely a throwback. The uh, the the GUI and the way that you kind of interact with things, um, but it is still uh, it was a lot of fun. Cool. Yeah, I might I might check it out. But I also need to eat some food. Oh God. Fine, fine. I'll stop talking then. <laughs> Jeez. God. I guess I'll talk to you next week. Yeah, the once a <laughs> week that we actually speak to each other. <laughs> Which is good because if we spoke to each other anytime outside of this one time, we'd be like, no, no, save for the podcast. We'd ha- yeah, we would have no podcast at all. <laughs> like the whole so time we'd be saying stuff that we'd already said at some point uh, and just yeah. trying to pretend that it was still funny yeah. <laughs> uh, don't get your ghosts up I've never heard that before 